Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. Banks must establish infrastructure for digital assets before it's too late. Crypto adoption and traditional legacy systems is moving fast, but a lack of technological infrastructure limits compliance and safe storage. The adoption of digital assets and traditional legacy systems is moving fast. And in the middle of the year, the digital asset custody industry saw welcome developments when the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the OCC, officially announced that all nationally chartered banks in the United States can provide custody services for cryptocurrencies. The move, while positive for the ecosystem, is yet to be accompanied by a rigorous assessment of its technological infrastructure, like asking questions such as, where are these newly acquired digital assets stored? One thing is clear, we have entered a new paradigm of finance that requires a different approach to securing assets. Digital assets offer great wealth potential, but asset custody providers have a responsibility to prevent their clients from becoming another figure of global crypto attacks, which reached a value of 1.4 billion USD in June this year. According to the Financial Action Task Force, the FATF yearly report, the industry's lack of infrastructure is limiting compliance and safe storage of assets. As traditional finance markets began to embrace the space, they must develop robust, tailored technology solutions within the strength of a legacy system. And on the next article is a refresher and reminder or something new if you are a new investor to the space. IMF warns banks to evolve or be left behind amid competition from big tech firms. Now, doesn't that pretty much follow up the previous article? Also, too, if you're interested, the links are always available in the description below. Take a few minutes. Uh, it's about two and a half minutes. And watch Christine Lagarde state it directly. Then we have the U.S. Federal Reserve actively working on digital dollar. The Federal Reserve Board of Governors and several Federal Reserve Banks are actively working on the digital dollar. Legislation has proposed that each American could have an account on the Fed for transacting in the central bank digital currency. Several digital dollar initiatives and the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, Loretta J. Mester, outlined the Fed's work on the country's central bank digital currency. CBDC. During a speech at the 20th anniversary Chicago Payments Symposium on Wednesday, noting that the experience with emergency payments led to the issue at hand and has accelerated the work in this area, Mester detailed. Legislation has proposed that each American has an account at the Fed in which digital dollars could be deposited as liabilities of the Federal Reserve Banks, which could be used for emergency payments. She added that other proposals would create a new payments instrument, digital cash, which would be like the physical currency issued by central banks today, but in a digital form and potentially without the anonymity of physical currency. And Mester explained that some designs of the digital dollar allow the central bank to directly issue the CBDC into end users' wallets using central bank facilitated transfer and redemption services without the involvement of commercial banks. She further confirmed that the Federal Reserve has been researching issues raised by central bank digital currencies for some time, emphasizing that various Federal Reserve banks are part of initiatives to explore the use of central bank digital currency. And we want to add that MetaBank expands faster payments platform, and they announced the expansion of its faster payments platform to include processors Finex and Taba Pay. And the reason I'm including that is because we've shown how that connects right back to Ripple and Stellar with its Tabapay and Finex. And the reason I wanted to highlight those and bring those out is because if you go back to 2004, the IMF working paper, a new taxonomy of monetary regimes. Now, as we get into this, we want to show that 481 times XRP connecting to nearly every country. And let's scroll down. We're going to get into a little 
conversation here. XRP means the exchange rate peg. So you have the exchange rate peg regime, countries with an exchange rate agreement classified by the IMF. So you can see again, this whole section just kind of is integrated together. So if XRP means the exchange rate peg, and then we've discussed for the past year how basically Donald Trump is bringing back the gold standard. And then if XRP is labeled as the standard, and then we have Judy Sheldon, his Fed pick, and she is a proponent of a gold-backed U.S. currency in a crypto sort of way. So what I want to do here is go into something from 1988. And in 1988, we had January 9th, 1988 from The Economist. We have the get ready for the Phoenix. What I want to get into here is at the beginning of 1988, this appears an outlandish prediction that the Phoenix would be favored by companies and shoppers because it will be more convenient than today's national currency which by then will seem a quaint cause of much disruption to economic life in the late 20th century. Disruption is what they constantly say with Christine Lagarde and the World Economic Forum. But what I find the most interesting thing to me in the entire article is, let's scroll down to this. It might be on the next page. Let's see. September. Let's see. Plaza Agreement of September 1985 or emergency measures to deal with a crisis of currency instability. We're kind of having that again today. So let's see. And they're calling the new, in this article, obviously they weren't going to discuss what it was going to be called, but they were calling it the Phoenix in the article. The world Phoenix supply would be fixed by a new central bank descended perhaps from the IMF the world inflation rate, and hence, within narrow margins, each national inflation rate would be in its charge. Each country could use taxes and public spending to offset temporary falls in demand, but would have to borrow rather than print money to finance its budget deficit. With no recourse to the inflation tax, governments and their creditors would be forced to judge their borrowing and lending plans more carefully than they do today. This means a big loss of economic sovereignty, but the trends that make the Phoenix so appealing are that taking the sovereignty away in any case, even in a world of more or less floating exchange rates, individual governments have seen their policy independence checked by an unfriendly outside world. Okay, here it is. The Phoenix would probably start as a cocktail of national currencies, just as the SDR special drawing right is today. In time, though, its value against national currencies would cease to matter because people would choose it for its convenience and the stability of its purchasing power. So going back to my theory on if they chose to back it by gold, that would be the starting point, not the ending point. As this article states from 1988, just as the SDR is backed by, I believe it's like five currencies, it would extend its value, or I should say its price to its value from beyond there. Again, being the starting point, not the ending point. And that would immediately take the price up significantly as the current SDR is back since 1969 with 0.88 grams of gold. It has always been backed by gold. So if they're connecting this again back to the IMF or the special drawing right, and then you have President Trump bringing the standard back to a gold standard, and if XRP is the chosen one for this, then it would have to be backed by the cocktail of national currencies and possibly gold. So I thought this was very interesting and just wanted to put something together for that. As we see, the XRP has been around on the IMF's working page since 2004. And we see that the XRP with the IMF stands for Exchange Rate PEG. And as we know, the IMF has the SDR, which is 
backed by gold at 0.88 grams of gold. And then now we have the president wanting to take the USD back to a gold standard. And Judy Sheldon, who consistently discusses being a proponent of a gold backed US currency in a cryptocurrency sort of way. And as a quick refresher, we have the Stellar wants to be the chosen platform for a digital dollar. Stellar has achieved some big milestones in the last five years, but has lofty goals for the next half a decade. In brief, Stellar wants to become the global payment standard in the next five years. And there's that standard word again. While admitting it won't happen anytime soon, the Stellar Foundation wants governments to issue CBDCs on the network. And that we've shown already is happening. And some of those CBDCs are currently backed by gold. So as we tend to highlight here, the twins, as we call them, Ripple and Stellar, we believe and we show constantly and daily how the two of them are into the new financial system. So it's going to be exciting to see how this all plays out and unfolds right before our very eyes as we are beginning to see daily today. I want to leave you with a final thought. A river cuts through a rock, not because of its power, but its persistence. And remember, this is not financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. Much love, and we will catch you in the next one.